Vice Chair of Scientific and its CEO, Sten Sørensen. Welcome, Sten. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be back. So I'm excited to be here. I'm the CEO of, of Serena Scientific and I've been with the company for six years. Uh, and I am excited to be able to tell uh, about uh, our vision and also our stage of uh, development and what we plan next. Okay, so uh, Serena Scientific uh, has a vision to unlock the potential within uh, an epigenetic modulation in cardiovascular common and rare diseases. And to our knowledge, we are the first company that commercially uh, uh, are applying this approach to development of uh, new therapeutic agents for the benefit of patients. We have a pipeline portfolio where we have our lead candidate, CS1, in phase two. Uh, and it's the lead candidate for uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension and uh, thrombotic indications. We also have a preclinical program, an NCE program in cardiovascular treatments. We're listed on the stock exchange since 2016 and we have a market cap of uh, around 150 million Swedish. So cardiovascular disease, as you might know, is uh, the number one killer on the planet. It actually causes double death compared to cancer every year. 80% of those, those deaths are related to thrombotic indications, uh, such as heart failure, uh, heart infarction and stroke. Now, being such a major health problem, it has tremendous impact on cost for society. And you can see the numbers here for Europe and the US. Uh, it is a major pharmaceutical market that's growing with 7.5% per year and it's uh, estimated to reach 43 billion around uh, by 2025. We estimate to reach the market around 27. Now, what is epigenetic modulation? Well, it's a new approach in uh, developing therapeutic agents for various diseases. And as I mentioned, we are uh, targeting the HDAC inhibition uh, programs. So, uh, and epigenetic modulation is actually impacting the expression of uh, the uh, DNA into proteins without uh, changing the structure of DNA. So it's the actual the expression. And we have a strong pipeline here for HDAC inhibition. Now, why is this so interesting for us and for the people around the world, the scientists that are uh, believing that this could have a high potential? Well, it's documented in preclinical work that HDAC inhibition has antifibrotic effects, anti-inflammatory effects, antihypertensive effects, and antithrombotic effects. And these effects are all uh, impacting disease progression in cardiovascular diseases and some rare diseases. So HDAC inhibition's potential here is tremendous for impacting disease progression beyond actually the end uh, complications. This is a highlight of our scientific advisory board and the newest addition is uh, Dr. Raymond Bensa from Ohio State University who is the top leader in pulmonary arterial hypertension uh, globally. And his opinion is that we have a real chance uh, to be a game changer for pulmonary arterial hypertension treatment. As you can see here also, we have uh, professors from Harvard uh, too, and we have from Michigan University, France, Karolinska, and so on. So it's a very strong group that we're working with. Uh, a glance on our pipeline here. So we have a lead candidate uh, that had this spring uh, received an orphan drug designation from uh, Food and Drug Administration, the regulatory body in the US. And that uh, comes with certain benefits, such, such as seven years exclusivity, uh, whilst uh, you have market approval. Uh, our lead compound is also approved for a phase two trial uh, in uh, thrombosis. And then our uh, new chemical entity program, our preclinical program, is also ongoing here. Now, what is uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension? It is high blood pressures in, in, in the lung. And it affects uh, 5 to 15 mm, individuals out of 100,000. Uh, so it's a rare disease. And these patients experience shortness of breath, fatigue, chest pain, edemas, 
fainting and heart palpitation. And it leads to problems of oxygen supply and ultimately fatal right heart failure. Lung transplantation is the last resort, so to speak, but only a few patients uh, get to get that. So PAH has a poor prognosis and it has unsatisfactory treatments at the moment. Now, why is uh, CS1, our lead candidate, and HDAC inhibition so interesting here? Well, the disease progression in, uh, in pulmonary arterial hypertension is driven by a change in, in cardiovascular uh, um, flow in the lungs, or blood flow in the lungs. So there is increased pressure and difficulty to, for blood to circulate. And this is accompanied with a fibrotic development and, and inflammation, and in some instances also thrombosis, thrombosis um, development. And uh, as you can see from this slide, uh, the characteristics of our lead candidate uh, fits very well with the characteristics of the patient. So we have documented that we our candidate has anti-inflammatory properties, antifibrotic properties, it reduces pulmonary pressure, and it also uh, uh, pr reduces thrombosis. So it fits very well, and I believe, and we believe, that's why Food and Drug Administration has given us the orphan drug uh, designation, because we have uh, documenting, uh, documented data that is uh, so interesting and promises to help these patients when it comes to disease progression, not only su systemic uh, impact. So where are we with our program? Well, we have, uh, as I mentioned, preclinical work that substantiated the uh, possibilities in, in this disease. And um, we have gone through a phase one trial uh, with good uh, safety and tolerability and our targeted pharmacokinetics. And we also lowered our biomarker for thrombosis pH in that study. Uh, we have, um, we're now pursuing, we have orphan drug designation and we're now pursuing our phase two program for efficacy in uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension. And um, we, have, um, uh, we have the orphan drug designation and we're going to work with, uh, when we have the trial approved, we're going to work with the top medical centers in the U.S. Uh, for the phase two, first phase two program, and then U.S. and Europe for the phase two B program. Now, looking at the market, it's a rare disease, but it's quite a, a large market. It's currently around six and a half billion U.S. dollars per year, and while we are targeting to estimate to reach the market 2027, it's going to be around 10 billion dollars. And and we have done our own estimates of our possibilities of market and marketing and sales here and we're uh, going to reach plus a billion dollar annually. Uh, so this is very exciting uh, but there, this approach with uh, epigenetic modulation has broader possibilities and PAH is actually the first attempt here now to utilize the characteristics of HDAC inhibition for impacting disease progression in cardiovascular disease and here you can see on this slide other possibilities. Uh, upcoming key milestones is that um, we have actually initiated our uh, IND process, uh, which uh, is targeting to get approval for uh, research of this CS1 in PH in, in the US. And we have a pre IND meeting scheduled already with FDA. We um, hope to get the IND approval in the spring and start to study in phase two with CS1 by mid-year next year. Um, and um, in addition to that, we are advancing our program with the new chemical entities in the preclinical work and hope to be able to communicate something around that uh, during the next year. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stan, for a very interesting presentation. Thank you. Let me start by asking you what the competitive landscape for Serena Scientific looks like. Well, the current there are about four different classes of drugs for pulmonary arterial hypertension, and they are not epigenetic modulators for one thing, but they're all approved on their ability to reduce uh, the pressure in the lungs, mm -hmm. and uh, we haven't seen in the documentation that they have any serious impact on disease progression. 
And what I also should say, the market is trending towards more combination therapy, so using the different agents together uh, to help the patient uh, better. Mm -hmm. um, so we are uh, aiming to enter that market with our drug, which we hope will be uh, reduce this, the pulmonary pressure, but also have the, an impact on disease progression based on the data that we have already. Uh, and we, uh, we will be able to, uh, if successful in our documentation, we'll be able to uh, provide this therapeutic agent to both in, in um, monotherapy, but also mm -hmm. together with other agents, we believe. Mm -hmm. Tying in a little bit to this, perhaps, uh, could you talk a bit about how important it has been to have this scientific advisory board in place now that you've moved to a new indication? Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, it's been very important, I think. So they actually contacted us or me uh, in, a couple of years ago, uh, our chairman in the scientific advisory board, Dr. Bertrand Pitt, who I've worked with in the past, and he found out what we were working with. and really wanted to meet. And, and that was the start of the build-up of the Scientific Advisory Board with these prominent uh, professors and scientists that we have today. And uh, they, we, our original approach was to uh, just look for thrombosis mm -hmm. prevention and create a more efficacious and less risky uh, drug for the market, which it needs, uh, less bleeds. Uh, but they pointed us to the possibility of, of disease progression based mm -hmm. on the data that they have seen uh, globally. Mm -hmm. And uh, based on that uh, indication from the board, we started an, an evaluation process and actually came up with a much broader program and a, a larger ambition. And I, maybe a natural follow-up question then. Can we expect you to go into any further cardiovascular indications with your candidate? Yeah, so today we have a phase two study and program approved for uh, uh, thrombosis. So our total knee replacement study uh, that we have paused uh, before it was started because we upgraded pulmonary arterial hypertension, the rare disease, as a, a better first approach for our program and, uh, and what we're trying to do for various reasons, uh, less costly, less uh, amount of time, less risk, and actually a better bet for the shareholders, uh, better value for, for, for the investments. So, so, uh, so PAH is the first uh, phase two program now, and thrombosis is halted for now. And uh, then there are other rare diseases that we are looking at. And as I showed on the slide, there are, there are several other cardiovascular mm -hmm. diseases that we might expand to later on. Well, it sounds like you have an exciting year ahead of you. Yeah, uh, we believe so. Thank you for coming. Thank you. <laughs>